Hi, I'm Mark Fondrasek, or Doc B, as students call, call me, and I'm a physics teacher at, at Evanston Township High School. And today I wanted to report on reporting your results for research, um, actually writing it up, making papers out of this, and also the opportunities that you have in high school after you actually do complete a project and write up your results. So writing up papers for research is part of the science process. Uh, my background here is Fermilab, which is not too far from Evanston, about an hour away in Illinois. And it's uh, one of our national labs. And when I was there in graduate school getting my PhD in particle physics, we wrote dozens and dozens of papers on every analysis that was being done. And then you put it out there for the rest of the scientific community to, to review and to critique, um, to tear apart in some cases, or to try to verify. Um, all of this is part of the science process. And if you're doing research in high school, if you really want to go through the entire process, you really should try to write up your results. Now, it's not as, as challenging, perhaps, as you might think, because you're used to doing this when you do labs in your science classes. A, a scientific paper is basically a, a glorified, <laughs> long version of like a lab report that you might do in a science class. So, yeah, professionals do this. Uh, there, there are hundreds of peer-reviewed journals that they try to publish in. It's actually one of the things that build up your reputation as a researcher, as if you're a professor, for example. Um, scientists will also present their work after they publish. They'll present their work and their findings at conferences. Okay? You, you might do a, a presentation, perhaps, in, in a class on work that you've done. Very similar to that. So it's all part of what scientists do. Now, for high school students, um, some of the, the sections here that I'm outlining in a, a typical research paper is, is, are, are the same sections that you'd have in a lab report. In fact, if you were to look at these slides that will be connected in, in the discussion or the description part of this video, uh, there's a link here that will take you to what you basically do for lab reports. And this is exactly what even what the professionals do, Nobel Prize winners when they publish will have these same sections, um, you know, talking about what the purpose is, what the problem is, background information, um, your materials and, and methods or procedures that you did so people can reproduce your experiment. Um, you, you show your data and you show the analysis and discussion of, of the results that you find. And you finally draw conclusions. Okay, that's, this is what we do in every single lab. It's the same kind of, of idea. Um, now, for, for those who are doing more independent research, other sections that you might include would be future research. Like if you had more time, what would the next steps be that you'd want to investigate? Um, acknowledgements, references. You always want to put references if you're using that um, in any kind of research, any kind of report in any class or subject area. So again, yeah, th this is a pretty, a pretty important part of, of what we do. So when, when you do this in high school, what is there, are there opportunities perhaps? Like, is there more you can do with it or is it just something to do just for the sake of doing? Well, first I, I wanna emphasize that no matter what type of research you're doing, these are the, what we call the three pillars of science, physical experiments, um, computational work, like uh, doing computer models and simulations, and then pure theory, more of the mathematical side of things. It doesn't matter what kind of research you're doing, everybody publishes, everybody writes it up and presents it up to the world. By the way, if, if you wanted some good examples of, of well done papers that high school students have done, uh, there's another link here that takes you to dozens of papers that Evanston students have done, and almost all of them have been submitted to different contests and have been recognized at either the local, state, national, and in a few cases, international um, levels. There's also a link down here from Nature, which is probably the premier journal, professional journal in the world, and they give advice as to how to write a first class paper in science. It's a different type of writing than what you're used to doing in English or history classes. Um, technical writing is, is just kind of a different beast, and 
most of the high school students don't have a lot of experience with that. Um, but we, we teachers, we're here to help you with it if, if you uh, choose to do this with your work. Now opportunities, and probably the main one for high school students is submitting to a, a few of the different kinds of competitions or contests that we get involved in. Um, there's a whole other video and, and set of slides just on how to do research contests. Um, the three main ones that we do are, are the science fair, which is run through the state, and there's actually an international science fair. And there's the science talent search, which is a big national one. There's a, another national one that we do through Loyola University, um, the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium. But that's, that will be outlined in, in the other video. So you, you can actually use in the, all of these, all of these competitions, it, they, they require you to submit a paper. Okay, the actual report of the research work that you've done. There are opportunities for high school students to publish in, in peer-reviewed sites. These are all kind of geared towards high school students. Um, some are run through universities, others are, are, are run through different organizations, and then they have um, either high, or high school students or in a lot of cases, college students might actually review your paper before they go on to these sites. Um, but you can check these out if you're interested in something like that. You can um, try to publish in a more professional type journal. Uh, a few of my students and I have submitted and actually got published in journals called the Science Teacher and the Physics Teacher. And these goes out, go out to thousands of teachers around the country, actually around the world, um, high school teachers and introductory college teachers. Uh, some of the projects that you're doing might be good for this kind of thing, where it, it can be turned into like a class lab that other teachers might want to use, and inquiry type projects, things like that. We do something called the Seesaw Project. This is with uh, Sierra Leone and some other very poor countries out in Africa, who prior to this never did any kind of lab work, any hands-on work in their science classes. It was pure memorization and, and lecture that they had in their classes forever. So we wanted to change how they, they do science. I'm working with teachers overseas, and our students here actually will take some of the project work or, or lab work that you do in a class, and we simplify it down to the point where you can do certain types of, of real you know, legitimate science um, experiments and demonstrations with bare minimum equipment or materials. Because these, these schools overseas are very poor. They don't have electricity in most cases, so they don't, they don't have the internet. Um, if you're interested in something like this and, and almost like a more humanitarian type of application, you can come see me anytime on this. By the way, it doesn't look bad on college applications if you have a paper, and some students will actually send their, their papers that they did for research to their colleges that they're applying to. Yeah, so some of there, there's lots of things you can do with it. It's a, it's a great experience. Um, all of our students who have done this in the past, and there's been hundreds who have, who have written up papers, um, have enjoyed it, and it, it was worthwhile. They submitted the contest or they did some of these other options. Um, but it's part of the science process, so it's good to have that experience before you go to college, before you get involved in higher level research. Um, and even though you're in high school, yeah, there's, there's a lot of fun you can have with it, but it all starts with the paper itself. So I hope this helps. I hope it, it gets you motivated a little bit and we, we have the resources and, and the teachers here who can help you go through this process. And um, yeah, and we can see where it takes you. So have fun and good luck with the work that you're doing.